Hey everybody, it's Deandra Marie, and right now is a beautiful, it's a beautiful sunny day, and also it's a special day because I am sitting with Francois Duperval, which consists of Jean-Claude Francois, co-owner and designer of Francois Duperval. David Odom, co-owner. LQ, director of marketing. I'm Compton. I do everything, man. Uh, merchandising. I help out with marketing, um, purchasing, sourcing, networking, whatever. I'm the cleaner. I'm the cleanup guy. You guys officially started the company in December 2012, but what gave you guys the idea to start? I had the idea to start the brand um, ever since I was in middle school. You know, so um, you know I was um, less fortunate to have like the high-end brand, whatever, at that age. So you know, I um, I'm like, you know what if. I can't, you know, wear Tommy Hilfiger and Polo. I'm um, have my own stuff, whatever. So, you know, so from that age, I began to to make my designs, sketch, you know, and I had my name together, you know, ever since then. And then eighth grade and through high school, it helped, you know, from me doing more and more designs as a teenager, whatever. As I got older in college, you know, I obviously got better and improved and, you know, it's been a passion of mine ever since then, you know, like, so that's where, like, the idea, you know, first came from. And what did the clothing first look like? I mean, you, it says on the website and everyone knows you came out first with a shirt, you know, you didn't have the shorts and the crew necks and everything that you have now to offer. So what did the first designs kind of look like? The first design was like in 2005, you know, when uh, we did like this butterfly type of shirt design, whatever, which, you know, we printed about, you know, 90 shirts in four different colorways. At the time, that's when streetwear really hit the market really, really, really hard back in like 2003, 2004, 2005, whatever. Like, so, you know, everybody, you know, uh, wanted like, you know, to have like a line, whatever. And then, um, and, uh, you know, we sold it in about maybe four different locations. And there were uh, mostly skate shop. And one popular one was the Vision East. That was like the go-to streetwear brand back then, you know, but, that was like a trial run just to see if it would sell. So that was like the purpose of that shirt. You know what? Let's put out a shirt and see if it sells. If it sells, then we can move forward. If it doesn't, then, you know, we might have to, you know, recoup and retain. You know, so that was like the very, very first shirt. Now, you said you started your first shirt. You know, you kind of had a sample or like a preview in 2005. So... Who were your inspirations in 2005? Inspiration in 2005, like, were, like, you know, um, Mighty Healthy was a brand, you know, uh, that was, like, very popular, you know, back in 05. 10 Deep, of course, was, was like, very popular. Lemar and Darley was, like, probably, like, my favorite, you know, back then, whatever. And then uh, that's when Crooks and Castles first hit the scenes up on the East Coast very hard. The hundreds and um of course like Stussy, Supreme and Old Bay, like you know, those core brands, you know, were like, you know, what made myself and my team, you know, fell in love with like the whole idea of street where like yo, these kids who are regular kids who are in college, inner city, you know, artistic, skateboard kids, punk kids, whatever, who had a vision, an idea that they wanted to make their own lane in fashion and they did it like so once i've seen them do i'm like yo like i had the same idea you know for years now i know that an average joe like me can make it happen so that was like you know the inspiration that helped motivate the francois duperval idea you named a lot of the brands. You said Stusty, The Hundreds, Mighty Healthy. Now that you're kind of, sort of, you can be on the, you're like on the same playing field with them. Who are your inspirations now? Honestly, like, inspiration now is like, it's, it's us. Like, you know, I think like we, we push each other and inspire each other to do different things. You know, this is a um, company, you know, that's, you know, pretty much dies whatever and everybody has their own idea of how something should look whatever you know so we uh definitely 
motivate ourselves and inspire ourselves to to be better than what's out now of course like you know but we have to like you know to pay respects to these brands who've been doing it for 15 20 years plus whatever you know i have my favorite compton has his personal favorites and lahai and dave as well whatever so you know like but you know we mainly you know get inspiration you know from ourselves like you know like to keep pushing and motivating each other to keep on going because it's a very difficult business also we all came up in a different culture we all came up in a decade the 90s we're all 80s babies so so we came up in the 90s in the 90s it was a different culture the street culture was different um the way you got up and did your hair was different than what somebody else did um the way you ate your cereal had to be different and unique other than the way of other people eating your cereal the reality of the situation is um we came up in a culture of not biting not stealing anybody's style. Everybody wanted to be a trendsetter. Everybody wanted to wear their socks differently. They wanted to be the new. We wanted to set the trends in our generation, in our culture. Um, and that's what we appreciated. You know, we, we valued the 90s. We weren't 90s babies because we were born in the 90s. I mean, the people that are born in the 90s don't even remember the 90s. I remember actually growing up in the 90s. I remember the culture of the streets and coming up and... You know, I'm from New York. He's from Jersey. I know I live between New York and New Jersey. Coming to Jersey, it was like you're going to Vietnam. You used to see the people with the 12-inch Tims and the full-body fatigues from the hats all the way down. And you you used to go outside and you used to see the 40 ounces at the basketball courts and people smoking beaties and and just the atmosphere of rap music blaring out of cars, blaring out of boom boxes. And, you know, every rapper had a different style. So that's what we... We value that, the, the authenticity of the 90s, of everybody wanting to create their own style, everybody wanting to be independent individuals. Whereas right now, it's a microcosm of everybody trying to do the same thing. Uh, I, I don't think our inspirations come from trying to be like anybody else. Like we all have different factors which make us who we are as individuals. And when it comes to Francois Duperval, we're creating a brand that's individualistic that are that's comprised of the different factors that we have as individuals as four individuals as well because we all take in something different so you know when joan claude bases a lot of stuff and he does a lot of designs and he reaches out to us and says hey how do you like it like this how do you like it like that Al Q might have something different than i have then i have something different than dave and he marks it up so we'll all give him something and what he'll try to do and the genius that is joan claude is what he'll do is he'll incorporate our vision into a microcosm of things that exactly shows exactly what we're trying to portray. You see what I'm saying? And he's a creator and he he's able to create that. That's what we can't do. That's what he can do. Like the 90s team, for instance. John claude and I, all we do is argue about 1990s and the music in the 1990s. What was the best album? What was this? What was that? And I remember we wanted to do something that was like an ode to the 90s. I remember I called John Clone up one day and was like, you know what? What we need to do is what we should do is do a playoff on the logos of the 90s, like the Tommy Hills, like the guests, because they changed their logos up since then. And that's what we fell in love with. Mm -hmm. He says, yo, let's take it a step further. Let's do like a whole 90s inspired line. He was like, listen, I got an idea. I'm going to hit you back later. He hits me back and he was like, you know, what if we did something that incorporated with the music? And I was like, what do you mean? He said, what were the classic albums? So we literally sat in his living room and came up with like all the classic albums that came up in the 90s. And he was like, yo, I have a great idea. And I remember I was sitting with him and he goes, I have a great idea, right? Boom, there goes the 90s tea. And in the 90s tea, what's so genius about that is we literally incorporated the top 90 albums that happened in the 1990s. So if you notice the T, it goes from 1990 to 1999, Mm -hmm. and it's comprised of 90 classic albums, arguably the best albums in the 1990s. Everybody that is a hip hop head that looks at that piece can figure out an album and how that made them feel at that point in time. And they're all different. Yeah, you can see Lauryn Hill, you'll see Fat Joe, you'll see Nas, you'll see Nori, you'll see DMX. Because you got to understand, 1998 was like, that was my classic year. That was my favorite year. <laughs> His year might not be 98. It might be 99, you know. And that that that, that whole team came out with an argument between John claude and I of who had the best rappers, who was the yeah. best group, who was this. And then you know what? He took that and it was like, just, it's, it's the inspiration. That's what inspires us, the street culture. You know, rap music, 
the street culture, how we lived and how we viewed coming up, because we were young people and how we viewed the older generation during that time. So when you talk about the inspirations, a lot, there's a lot of inspirations. But originality is our true inspiration and in how we viewed the world during you know the time that the street culture was flourishing. I remember that you said, and kind of going off of what John and Compton said, John, you said that you wanted your clothing or your clothing is worn essentially by anyone. You know, you have skaters, fashion enthusiasts, you know, people who love the streetwear, you know, punk, punk rockers. So what is the message? I mean, I know you have the top R&B and the top rap albums on the 90s T, but what is the message you want to send to people wearing the shirt, whether, you know, all walks of life and also people who are seeing the, your clothing? It's only one message that um I could think of, you know, and I just want people to appreciate what we do and see like a design or a shirt or, or a jacket or a hat and just genuinely just like like yo, that's a dope hat, yo, that's a dope shirt, yo. Who makes that shirt? You know, like like it, it, and then um and I just want, you know, whoever buys the shirt or any piece that we make. I want that to be their favorite piece. Like, I want that to be like your favorite hat that you wear 24 seven, or your favorite shirt that you just wash all the time and wear all the time, whatever. And I just want people, whatever, to just really love the brand. Like, you know, like, you know, when a person or people really love your brand, they will follow you from the beginning to end. I want, you know, all our supporters, everybody who has ever purchased an item from us to understand that we do it to also make a stand and also be unique in a culture that is becoming like a copycat type of, you know, thing, whatever. So, you know, like, you know, I just want people to really enjoy what we produce period and I don't know I noticed when you were saying um, you know you want it to be like their favorite shirt that they want to wear and wash all the time and it just goes back to what Compton was saying about like the 90s era I mean I was born in the 90s but I'm pretty nostalgic so it's like you know you watch old movies or you look back it's like sometimes the person will wash the shirt the day you know wear it every day and just keep washing it or throw the same hat on and I feel like you're right now we live in an era where everyone wants to be different but they look so much the same I mean just an example is Jordans it just to me it's a little annoying because it's like you have a pair of Jordans two years later they come out with the same pair of Jordans and people are still in line for those same pair of Jordans. You know, that this is what people use their money on. There is no originality. There is no unique style anymore like the 90s was. So you guys ensure quality clothing, right? And I noticed when I went on your website, you know, I see jackets or I'll see a hoodie. And it's like $70 plus, $70 plus, which is fine and dandy. Now for people who are like, I guess cheaper people or people who don't know the brand that much they're like what what what's going on so how can how do you guys ensure and promote your quality clothing that people are paying for sort of be blunt but when it's just that dope <laughs> people will gravitate towards it no matter what right. see the nail that sticks out gets hammered when you design something from the heart and you don't go by what everybody else is doing you're gonna stand out right. fortunately for us that's you know what John claude is i noticed Things we came out with in the past couple of seasons. If you look at the trend now, most of the brands that are high, quote unquote, high up there, are starting to do things similar to it. If we would have went with the trend back then, the designs we made last year would be doing them now. Right. But I feel like we're ahead of the ball game because we're so unique, and that's what makes people pay seventy dollars for a no, very dope good. hoodie. The big thing I, I remember I used to argue with everyone at this table all the time because I'm like you if you make the price that much nobody's gonna get it okay. and um, they used to come at me all the time like you know what stick to it leave it the way it is and the big thing about everyone that's here is that everyone is a perfectionist right in their own way it was dope to see that people respected that and that people respected the brand enough to not ask for discounts not ask for things to go down but to be loyal and to pay for something that they really want because if you really want something you will pay for it 
so not to diminish the value or anything like that. And I think I think that's what we've that's what we've been able to do. Okay, so here's how I feel about that, right? When you think about fashion, you think about street culture, right? When there's an upcoming artist, upcoming brand, people don't want to support that brand or that artist. Example, like the Yeezy boots, whatever, just came out. They are not the best looking sneakers in the world, but people are paying $300, $500, $1,000. Like people are paying crazy amount of money, not because it looks good, because of the name. Even the sneaker culture, Jordans are box price at 160, 170. People are reselling Jordans for $500. Not because it's that, like, it looks that much amazing, that's great, whatever. When it comes to our brand, we are in boutiques that carry every high-end streetwear brand. That, you know, boutiques that carry Stussy, you know, 10 Deep, Obey, Chris and Castles, every single one you want to name. But people, they would rather go support a brand that's not making a better shirt, but since it's, it has a name to it already, they want to pay that price. Like, our clothes are not different from any other streetwear brand that's out. Like, if you compare our brand to the top 30 streetwear brands, it's the same exact price. Our t-shirts are the same exact price as their t-shirts. Their t-shirts might cost more. We uh, came out with satin jacket. We priced the satin jacket at 160. Now, Stussy had black satin jacket at the same store that we were in. Their satin jacket was priced at 160 as well. Our satin jacket was thicker than their satin jacket. Their satin jacket was was light and flimsy. Now, their jackets are made in factories where they making 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 jackets in one colorway. They might cost them like 15 bucks, 10 bucks, whatever, to make that jacket. When you are a small brand and you coming up, it costs us more money to make our jackets then Stussy, 10 Deep, or whoever caused them to make their jackets per. And ours is, if not the same, better quality than theirs. So if our shirts were cheap shirts, cheap hats, and people complain, yo, I bought your shirt, I washed it one time and shrank, then I can understand why a person might complain that a shirt costs twenty-five dollars. A shirt costs thirty-two dollars. Like go to any store. <laughs> if you buy any brand that's a name brand, you're gonna pay thirty more dollars for a t-shirt. You're not gonna pay unless you know you, you at Walmart right. or, or like or <laughs> Foreman Mills. You're not gonna pay less than twenty-five dollars or thirty-two dollars a t-shirt and that's the same price that our shirt costs and our shirts if a person has our shirts they could wash our shirts a thousand times i have shirts that i've been wearing for the like three years it still fits the same his shirts he washed like you know we wash our shirts over and over and over and over and over again ourselves and it's worth the money and at the end of the day it's exclusive Everybody doesn't have it. I just wanted to ask, John claude you mentioned that you guys are smaller. You guys aren't at the capacity to make and sell, you know, 10,000 shirts or 10,000 hoodies. You know what I mean? What is the most difficult part or what was the most difficult part about being Francois Duprival? I think one of the most difficult things starting the beginning was trial and error. You know, we didn't have that big brother to go to for advice, like, you know, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think it is? You know, we had to figure out our way as we went. You know, fortunately for other colleagues of ours who are now starting up with their brands, you know, they have perfect big brothers to ask questions to who are us. But I, I believe one of the most difficult part was, you know, we've made the shirts, now what? At a point in time, we were in more than 12 different stores. And in our minds, we thought that was the right move to make but then we thought to ourselves, what are we really benefiting from by being in all these stores, having to make more quantities that we needed just to get stuck with them 
in the event the next season rolled around. Another lesson we had to learn on our own. Personally saying one of the difficult things was we had nobody to look up to. We just had to learn as we went along. Only thing as 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 far as me, as far as being difficult, it's like that fine line between being inspired by other brands, but then at the same time not doing what those brands are doing. Right? Like respecting the brand, but at the same time going as far away from other brands as possible. To me, that's difficult um, because you want to be as successful as, let's say, these other brands. But at the same time, you don't want to do anything like they did. And, and not to say that we're, we're, we're way more superior, but we have a different message that we're trying to say. We, we, we have something else that we're trying to give to the people. So why try to make something different if we're going to do it the same way? Just to piggyback off to what Dave said, um, not having the right big brothers. The fashion industry is just like the music industry. It was just like the film industry. It was just like any other industry that you're into. The people with the know-how aren't trying to reach back with a ladder and help anybody coming up. It's almost like I'm a firm believer in the, uh, the mantra that there's no such thing as something for nothing, right? Especially when it comes to business. When it comes to Francois Dupreval, I try to put my business thinking cap on first, especially when it's in dealing with relationships and networking with people and things of that nature. Because I understand the way of the world. I understand how business works. When somebody gives you uh, even a piece of advice, they're looking for something in return. And that's been consistent, pretty consistent with everybody we've worked with. So I, I would say what's the most difficult thing about being Francois Dubreval is navigating those relationships and navigating and networking our way into getting what we needed to get accomplished. Like, for instance, finding a person to manufacture the products that we need at the quantities that we need, finding the right people to deal with, finding out who was just talking and who was really about that business, portraying us in a light that we're about that business and we're not just, you know, a fly-by-night type of company. You know, uh, it took a lot of perseverance and, uh, and it took a lot of consistency for us to get to even at the point where we're at now, which is absolutely better than where we were three years ago, but not where any of us envisioned that we can go as a company to this point. So we still have a lot of growing up to do, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that we still need to foster and make those relationships and find the right people to get us in the right situations, just like any other industry. I think for me and what I do and what I do with Francois Dubreval, that is probably the single most hardest thing to do. Putting yourself out there, getting out there, finding what relationships work, finding what relationships don't. So that's what I would, that would be my answer for what's the hardest thing. So I remember LQ, you said, you know, you're not saying that you're superior than other street brands, but you're on the same level, at, at least on the same level. But it's hard when you're not trying to be like them, but you're still on the same level as them. So how do you guys keep Francois Dupreval fashion forward? Do you all contribute or is it just Jean or how does that work? You have to be aware of what's happening now in fashion, you know, with streetwear brands, you know, with music, fashion, entertainment, everything has an impact on each other. One important thing, I make designs, you know, which happened to me a few times, I can make a design like that, I'm like, yo, this design is dope, this design is crazy. Then I look through social media, online magazines, fashion blogs, fashion websites, whatever. I'm looking to see if any other brand hasn't done that idea yet. And there are a lot of times where I'm like, yo, I wanted to do a series with the Warriors. Like like the movie The Warriors, I had the idea in my head. I called my boy, I told Dave, my like, yo, this is gonna be crazy, it's gonna be dope, I'm gonna do this and that, whatever. Two days later, I go like on a hype beast and, and, and I forgot what brand it was. They did a whole collection on the Warriors. I'm like, oh man, this is crazy. I had just other, other idea to do a design like with like like the face cards, like 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 the decker cards, you know. And I had the crazy. I'm like, yo, I'm do this design, this and that, whatever. And the next day, I think it was me and Compton or me and Dave or somebody whatever was in New York. As I'm walking, there's a guy who's walking in front of me. He had a red tank on and it was the same exact idea I had. Like, so a big part of it is staying ahead of the curve 
when it comes to your designs and being creative it's like you know making a design that everybody can appreciate and appeal to not just people in the urban communities you know people from la you know canada europe whatever you know like uh, uh we want to create something that speaks to different cultures whatever and and that is very important of us staying ahead of everybody else and just really branding ourselves as a company that you can count on for dope pieces. Well, I think that's really cool because, again, like, it's crazy how we live in an era where everybody is doing the same exact thing, and it's like they don't even care. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, yeah, I'm going to come out with this to make a few dollars, and it looks like everything else, but it's okay, so. No, what you're saying, <laughs> it's, it's the thing to do now, like, you don't understand, growing up, if somebody bought a pair of Jordans to school and they were the first person in the school with the pair of Jordans, nobody wanted that pair of Jordans. Nobody wanted to be the second person with that pair of Jordans. Everybody was racing to be first. If somebody had the new uh, physical science, I used to be a big phys into that brand. Somebody was rocking physical science, which nobody was in my town. I used to have nothing but physical science, you know, and everybody was like, what's that? What's that? Well, don't worry about what that is. That's what I'm wearing. Why you want to know, you know? Now it's like John Claude has a Yankee hat. He has a true blue Yankee hat, right? With the great underbrim. Yeah. Somebody will see it. Hate. Say, oh, oh, that's a nice Yankee or whatever. Oh, where did you get that? Oh, well, I usually get mine with the green, yeah. right? Next you know, on a low, they go and get the one with the gray. And then they try to wear it at places first before he gets around. <laughs> so they'll try to get the shirt or get the hat and wear it so they could be the first one with it. Like, Everybody's running to copy off each other. Everybody's running to be the same. I think what separates us to even answer that question and build it is our fearlessness, man. That's what keeps us willing to create something new and stay above the trend. We're fearless. If we're going to come out with something, we're going to believe in it and we're going to come out with it. We're going to make a conscious decision to stick with the designs that we make and we're going to move forward after that. We're not going to be afraid and we don't care whoever comes out with it after us. Like we've seen a bunch of different stuff. We had the first glow in the dark designs. He made that, he marked that up six, eight months before they were even in production. We came out with the shirt and then, you know, I'm not going to name the company, but a big name company came out with it. And then, you know, they're going to swallow us right now because we don't have the right amount of exposure. But once we get the right amount of exposure and, and, and include John Close designs and then our hustle and our work ethic after that, I don't think we can be stopped. And you're talking about your work ethic and your design. I just want to say for four guys to be, you know, a part of this clothing line, how does that work for you guys? I mean, you guys are really good at separating business and personal. How do you guys keep it together? Uh, I'll answer this one because I probably, I probably argue with everybody on here. Um, here's what it is. John claude and I never see the same side of things. Nine times out of ten, every decision is an argument. Okay. That's about 30 to 45 minutes. But I think what we learn to understand is we learn to understand different perspectives and it keeps us honest. He's not gonna show me something and I'm gonna be like, that's dope, just to make him feel better. Right. If it's a trash design, I'd be like, yo, no, that's trash. He's gonna get upset and be like, what do you know about this and the third, this and the third? <laughs> but guess what, we're gonna get somewhere. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna just go nowhere. Right. At the end, we may agree just to disagree because he has a strong personality, I have a strong personality, but we keep each other honest. LQ may come up with a marketing idea. I'll be like, LQ, that marketing idea is trash. Then he'll be like, well, what do you got better? This and a third. And then we'll keep each other honest. I may come up with some brilliant brains and scheme. And they'll be like, Compton, get the F out of here with that. There's no <laughs> way we're doing that. And I'll argue my point. But you know what? We keep each other honest. Same with Dave. I mean, everybody can attest. Just because I say something, just because Dave says something, just because John Claude says something, he's a designer. Just because LQ something, that doesn't mean it's going to fly. We still got to pass the checks and balances of the other three people. You know, at the end of the day, I feel like as of today, the majority rule wins, but we kind of want all decisions unanimous. You know, if somebody feels really strongly about something to do it, I haven't seen anybody move forward with something that one person has felt strongly about not doing. You know what I mean? Or what we'll do is we'll come to a middle ground where it's, okay, it's not everything the way that one of us wanted to do, but we make concessions because it is about the group. And if the majority is going with it, we have to make certain concessions to make sure that it moves forward. Because once the project product is out there, we are going to go headstrong with it. So at the end of the day, all major decisions that have to do with the company, with Francois Dubovall, it's a joint effort. So we're going to move in solidarity.
You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So the behind the scenes stuff happens behind the scenes. Once we make a, a decision and we make that confirmation, we move forward as a unit. Just to piggyback off him and what he was saying about fearlessness and how we keep the, 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 the team involved, honestly, it's about the four strong-minded individuals that are here. And the only reason I say that is because it goes back to what Captain was saying about, hey, if we, if, if we have a logo, if we have some type of series that comes out, we're going to stick to it. And we're not just going to do something because that's the thing to do, or we're not just going to trash something because it's not the thing to do. It, it starts with the players, right? Because if you have weak-minded individuals on the team that will burn or, 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 or fall under pressure, you're not really going to make it. It goes back to the, the, the guy sitting at the table. It's like we're all very confident within ourselves, which is why the brand is extremely confident on its own. Because if it gets past us four, it's legit. And that's why Compton was saying um, Jean-Claude will bounce ideas off everyone. Dave will bounce ideas off everyone. Comp will bounce ideas. I'll bounce ideas. And that's why it was so hard for him earlier to, to, to kind of take a title because – Right now, it goes through all of us. Yeah, you say marketing director, you say designer and stuff like that. Yes, that's business-wise. You need that so you can kind of filter things into, you know, who should kind of handle what. But right now, it's a four-headed monster. And that's why I think it's going to work. I definitely have to give you guys your props. Um, just sitting with you guys, it's obvious you're all confident. It's obvious you guys all know what you're doing. Like you said, despite title, if you're confident and you're um, secure within yourself, even if something somebody calls your idea trash or says, uh, I don't really like that, it doesn't break your confidence because you know the type of person you are. You know what you bring to the table. And you guys are humble. That's another thing. You guys are so very humble to say, okay, he thinks my idea is trash. All right, well, what do you think? All right, so let's take it. Let's go back to the drawing board, you know, and I think that... Trust me, it's not going to be that nice. Well, no. <laughs> okay, so it may not be that nice, but for the people listening, you know, just in a nutshell... I don't think I argue with people about design. No, 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 I argue with people. But when I send a design to Lahat and he says, I don't like it, I ask him one question, why not? Because I want to know why he doesn't like it and if I could change it and make him like it. Right. I ask everybody that same question. Now, when, when I send designs to people, I send designs to close friends of mine who I know are going to tell me the truth. And it's about 15, 20 different people. Now that's 15 or 20 different answers, right? So it's like, Dad, how can I get 80% or 90% of, of those 20 people to like this one design when everybody has a different opinion, right? I have to ask questions like, yo, what if I change this? What if this and that? Then I take all of that and I try to go back to the drawing board. And then I think our biggest problem after that is choosing which out of the four are we gonna go with. Cause they might like a different tool, I might like a different tool, but it's all four dope designs. It just now it's like that. 20 was hard. Now it's trying to choose from four is it harder, whatever. But I don't like I don't get mad. I don't like you know like I don't think I do. I, don't try to defend it. I feel, like, I feel like most artists, and I'm, sometimes you hear about like even music artists. Yeah, artists are pass passionate, and not calling you a sensitive person, but they're sensitive about their work. I mean, to be honest, I mean I'm not like a music artist, but if I show people, I'm like, oh, I don't like it. Okay, what don't I'm I'm the same way. I'm like, okay, what don't you like about it? What can I do better? You know what I mean? So it's okay. Like I, I know where you <laughs> I know where you're coming from. Yeah, it doesn't mean that and if you argue about your stuff, sometimes that's a good thing because you're that passionate. But I'm glad you don't let your pride get in the way of because this could easily be I mean, you're the only designer. This could easily be, oh, well, I, I designed it, so I don't really care what anybody thinks. You know what I mean? And that's another thing that I really do like about Francois Duperval. Now, before we head out, what can the listeners and the fans expect from Francois Duperval? Um, summer's, you know, closely coming to a close. So what can we expect for the fall season? I would say whatever they are expecting, it's not going to happen. 
<laughs> We're just getting started. Like we've proved to y'all already, we get better every single season. You know, we take whatever you see right now and we'll do the opposite. And chances are what we do this fall, you will see next fall. So, you know, if you want to see next year's trend, look at it. Look at Francois Dufour this year. Yeah, like that. <laughs> more creativity and more limited pieces, you know, like, you know, like, because I'm liking, you know, the limited pieces are, are something special, you know. A lot more creativity and just expect us to continue to grow and produce great quality garments. We're gonna grab you by your ankles, hold you over the balcony, and shake all the change out your pockets, man. Our designs are gonna be so dope, it's gonna be like we're robbing you, seriously. You need to be very thoroughly invested in your savings account, because when you get these new styles that we're gonna be dropping this fall, we're gonna try to turn it up. Every year, we've gotten successfully better and better. We've started moving more product. We got to a point where we know what the equilibrium point is, like where we know what we need to produce, we know who's going to buy it, we know how to push it. We're getting to the point where we're self-sufficient when it comes to pushing our own stuff as well. Before, like we said, we were in 12 boutiques up and down the East Coast. We did that in under two years. So now, about eight months, yeah, you're correct, around eight months. So now, we took ourselves out of those boutiques. We're self-sufficient now. We drove the traffic that was coming into that boutique directly to our personal page. So what we're gonna be doing now is we're gonna be setting the trend. You might see us back in the boutiques, you might not. It depends on what we feel like doing. We're supremely confident in the brand. We're supremely confident in our ability to make it work and to make dope products. So like I told you, what you should see with us right now is, is uh, a consistent confidence that we have and we're gonna do major things come 2016. Okay, so thank you guys so much. Again, the team, the masterminds, more than one, of Francois Duperval. If you're interested in buying any of their clothing, apparel, accessories, because they sell it all, go to FrancoisDuperval.com and make sure you follow them on all social media, Francois Duperval. Spelled a little differently, but the link is down there below in the description. So thank you guys for sitting with me. I hope you guys have a good day.